Mark 11. We continued uh, growing and building and, and our, uh, building up the teaching of St. John in the first reading, as he, this first letter to this small church or small community. And today we're beginning to see some of the main points he's getting to, some of the culmination he's been telling us, remember, to uh, this is how we know that we love Jesus or that we we remain in Jesus and abide in him and he abides in us and his love abides in us is that we, we obey his commandments and live out his commandments. So if we live out those commandments, we uh, have Jesus within us, we possess Jesus. And then today he's telling us uh, this is the great testimony of the great good news. God gave us eternal life and this life is in his son. And so whoever possesses the son has this eternal life. So this is the point of, the, of obeying the commandments, living that lifestyle of Jesus Christ, is so that Jesus dwells within us, so that eternal life it dwells within us. So it's a, a good reminder for us that eternal life does not happen or start after we die, but eternal life is something that begins right here, right now, in relationship with God, relationship with Jesus, the Father, the Holy Spirit, and His community, the Church. So we're already living, if we are obedient to God's commands and His way of life, Jesus already dwells within us with His Holy Spirit as well, and we're already living eternal life right now. I don't know if I'd call it heaven, but eternal life right now. We're already living and participating in this. One of the ways we can see, uh, as we continue to yield our will to God's will and, and live out the commands, Jesus, the commandments that Jesus gave us and live out those promptings of the Holy Spirit moving within us, the more we're doing that, the more we're experiencing life. And, how to, and, and one of the signs that we're experiencing eternal life or living the eternal life is that we can say we're experiencing greater freedom. We're living greater freedom, experiencing greater freedom as, and the more the life of God grows within us. So remember, at the very beginning he said, who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God, believes with the actions of our life. And then we have victory over the world. Remember John told us the world, he said the world is, uh, the world or worldly is that that entices our eyes, tries to draw our eyes away from Jesus and then onto some material thing. The world is full of lust, so it draws us away from love and into lust, and the world uh, it's that, it tries to, gets us to try to build up our pride of life, to build up our own reputation, instead of uh, living for the life and the name of Jesus Christ. And so we have victory over those three things to the extent that we're living out God's commandments. And, and then, in a sense, that victory we're experiencing is the freedom, freedom uh, from pride of life, freedom from lust, freedom from being, from uh, our eyes being enticed or distracted or drawn away from God and his, and his plans. So uh, that's one of the, the greatest ways we can know we're experiencing eternal life even right here and now, as, is to look and recognize how we're experiencing greater freedom here and now by the life of Christ dwelling within us. Heavenly Father, we just ask you to continue to pour forth your Holy Spirit into our lives, your, your eternal divine life into our lives to help us live the lifestyle of Jesus Christ so we can experience um, the fullness of the freedom that you offer us. We pray all these things together in Jesus' name. Amen.